New developments on a story we first brought to you back in July. It's a story of seven-year-old Journey Hoffmeyer. A librarian at her school cut her hair without asking her parents. Now her father has filed a $1 million lawsuit against the school district and the individuals involved. This all happened back in March when Journey, who is biracial, came home with half of her hair chopped off. She told her father that a white classmate had done it on the bus ride home. Jimmy Hoffmeyer took Journey to the hair salon to get an asymmetric hairdo. Two days later, a librarian took it upon herself to quote, even it out in an effort to quote, make it look better. To discuss the latest developments in this case, I'm joined by Christina Laster, Director of Policy and Legislation for the National Parents Union. The Hoffmeyers are represented by the union, which advocates for children who experience discrimination. Uh, Christina, glad to have you back. Thanks, I'm glad to be back. All right, so can you talk about, um, talk about the impact this has had on, on Journey, who's only seven years old? Journey uh, continues to uh, be in counseling and therapy. It has impacted her socially and emotionally, um, her understanding about school environments and about the learning process. Um, and definitely more than anything, it has injured her self-esteem, right? How she sees herself um, amongst her peers and her identity as a little girl. Her hair is still in the process of um, growing back. And there is still a lot of confusion, um, sadness and disappointment um, that Journey has and her family shares. Uh, so it's been traumatic for Journey, but you're saying that her family shares in that trauma. Can you, can you talk about this lifelong injury uh, to the entire family? Explain what they've gone through. Yes, so Journey has sisters and they all took pride in their hair and just as little girls, you know, want to be princesses and play up, uh, play dress up and play with each other's hair. When Journey came home um, with barely any of her hair left, um, her sisters were also in shock and awe and traumatized, right? And it totally disrupted the way that they play, um, the way that they started to think about each other um, and then, you know, because Journey um, did get a lot of gifts and attention, um, it also created confusion in her siblings of what is really happening. If, as you can imagine, children are internalizing a lot of things that they see and experience around them, but don't really have the adequate words to externalize um, things. And so it takes therapy and, and some development through a um, psychiatrist or, or, or a certified counselor to be able to help them externalize what they're feeling, what they're seeing, why this happened to their family. Dad, um, on the other hand, Jimmy Hoffmeyer, you know, is very disappointed, confused, but also exhausted from the level of harassment and bullying and intimidation and threats and being called a liar and just defamation of all kinds. You know, when he was only seeking that the situation would be rectified on behalf of um, the school district and what they did and that they would hold themselves accountable. And to this day, um, they still have not received an apology. And so you can see where there's a layer of just sadness and hurt and disappointment and shock, right? Um, with this whole situation. And there are other things too, as well as being in a small town um, where you're only part of the 4% of the population and you know, just not having people to uh, turn to and, and people that are just totally against you and feel like you've disrupted their town by bringing forth this information. And so this family suffers every day on levels that the, the public doesn't understand. Uh, now, we reached out to the school district office in Mount Pleasant for a statement, and this is what they said in part, quote, the district has been made aware of recent media reports of a lawsuit that Jimmy Hoffmeyer has filed on behalf of his daughter. We are confident that the facts will prevail given our district's appropriate and aggressive response to the incident and the findings of the third party investigation that was conducted. We will aggressively defend against these baseless allegations in court and will not allow this to distract us from our mission to provide every child a world-class education that prepares them for college and careers. Uh, Christina, the district is catching a lot of heat for their response. Uh, give me your thoughts on their statement. 
So one thing I would like to say is that during this whole time, they've been able to consistently and, and you know, on time do great PR, right? But when you talk to the community people on the ground, I have talked to other people that are black in Mount Pleasant and their children or they um, attended Mount Pleasant Public Schools. The story really is not lining up um, with what the district's saying. I know that the district is going to continue to try to protect itself. It talks about a third party investigation, but you cannot conduct a thorough third party investigation without talking to the victim in this situation, which they did not. They didn't talk to Journey Hoffmeyer, they didn't talk to her therapist, they didn't talk to the family, and they didn't um, have that third party conducted with their testimony. And so I wouldn't call that an aggressive, um, you know, way to extract evidence or find information and move forward in a productive way at all. Um, also, with regards to just their steps to really um, hear from the community and hear from the people that attended the first board meeting after this took place. We have recommended, you know, that they do some sorts of uh, training, some type of formal community um, information and uh, gathering um, and information sessions. None of that took place. And so when they say that they're, they're taking these aggressive approaches and that they feel like their story will prevail, it'll be very interesting because we, I feel, and we all feel the same sentiment that justice will prevail based on the evidence and information that we have. And so we definitely seek that rem a remedy in the courts. Christina, you said that the district um, failed to properly train, monitor, direct, discipline, and supervise their employees. What could have been done by the school to prevent this from happening in the first place? I believe that employees should be trained on safety protocols, right? Also, what is um, requires consent and permission from parents? I don't think that it's far-fetched at all for a person with common sense, even if they're not a credentialed teacher, to know that you cannot cut a child's hair at school and definitely without the permission or consent of her parents, right? There are, there are guidelines, policies, and laws Children go to school for an education. It's a learning environment. They don't go to school to receive haircuts. I don't even know of a licensed uh, beautician or cosmetologist or any salon that would allow a seven-year-old to walk in and receive a haircut without a parent or without a parent's consent. And I definitely don't know of any stylist, professional stylist, that would be willing to cut a child's hair to the extent that Journey's hair was, was unprofessionally cut. Well, Christina, now that a lawsuit has been filed, what's next for this case? The family um, has decided to exercise their rights, which I hope that parents do all the time, to pursue accountability and remedy through the courts and to pursue justice through the courts. So now we have to wait for that court process um, to, to continue and to be complete to find out what's next. And um, we will escalate the matter from there, but I definitely am hopeful and encouraged by the fact that the family is going to continue to pursue justice on behalf of Journey Hoffmeyer and at the same time continue to um, try to pursue some type of normal life again, you know, with counseling and therapy and time. I believe that they will be able to be resilient and have grit from this situation, you know, and not just look at it as a traumatizing event but be able to say, you know, wow, that happened in our life and now we're at this point, but they're just not there yet. Christina Laster, Director of Policy and Legislation for the National Parents Union, thank you so much for your time tonight. We're just days away from the premiere of Amplified with Aisha Mills. Next, she joins me to share more on what you can expect and we talk about the far-right rally planned for tomorrow at the nation's capital.